What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and as we kind of have this weird week in between RCQ seasons where we are just ending Pioneer, it just happened this past weekend, is the last opportunity to qualify for regional championship Washington DC, at least in terms of a, an RCQ, I guess there is last chance qualifiers at the event and stuff. But we are done with the Pioneer season, and we are going to be going right into the Modern season. Believe the weekend that this video is coming out, we are not going to have any Modern RCQs, but it will be kind of the week after, and we will go on for a few months like we do every every season just about. And uh, this deck in particular I think is very good. I think this was kind of like heralded as like the Nadu killer like this is going to be one of the better if not one of the best decks to kind of handle our bird wizard friend and if he's going to stick around for at least maybe the beginning part or like the first few weeks of the modern season then I think it's kind of worth looking into I do think past Nadu though just guy control is kind of a solid option so let's go ahead and take a look at the just guy control deck for the modern format and kind of get an understanding of what is going on here and what exactly has made control an actual popular a popular pick and an actual good pick for the modern metagame but of course before we get too deep into that if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to see more videos from me where i post a lot of videos pertaining to the modern and pioneer format along with some other longer form videos so if any of that stuff interests you go ahead and consider subscribing and ring notification bell so you know when those videos get posted in the future so with that being said let's go ahead and check out just guy control so for a long time in modern control has been kind of a sensitive topic for a lot of people really control is a, an archetype that you could certainly play but it was never really a good thing to kind of stop what your opponents were doing you know if your opponent was playing like a combo deck instead of trying to play something like a just guy control being a little bit more proactive like playing thought sees and just putting a quick clock on your opponent was more valuable than playing just counter spells and slowly you know kind of Putting your opponent to less and less outs to try and win the game, it was just a lot easier to, you know, if your opponent has like a 1 in 10 shot of winning the game, you know, that was totally fine because they were going to only have one or two turns to do that, where you could slowly make it like a 1 in 30 or something or like a 1 in 40 that your opponent was going to win and uh, obviously very more likely in that case, but just a lot easier to put pressure on your opponent immediately, disrupt what they're doing right now, and then try to win the game in your own quick way, whether it's with your own combo or just uh, flooding the board with very powerful creatures. But Just Guy Control is kind of taking new shape thanks to Modern Horizons 3 and some of these other energy cards that have kind of come out. We talked about Nadu in the beginning where this is kind of a deck that you would want to be playing to play against Nadu and where you'd want to see a lot of Nadu. And it's thanks to a lot of the energy cards, uh, mainly the card Wrath of the Skies, which is a t double white and X sorcery that says you get X energy counters. And then you may pay any amount of energy and destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with mana value less than or equal to the amount of energy paid this way. So you are able to, with Wrath of the Skies, you know, play it for two mana. You know, if you already have uh, energy stored up, which we'll go over some of the ways that you can do that. Uh, and then you can just pay a bunch of energy and then presumably, you know, turn four, what have you, you're able to leave up something like a counter spell. You're able to leave up some other form of interaction thanks to Wrath of the, Sky, Wrath of the Skies. Um, also pairing well, the fact that, you know, I guess if it was an instant, it'd be pretty busted. But the fact that it's a sorcery, you also get powerful planeswalkers like Teferi Time Raveler. Just give you just that much more value, uh, with not only with the other sorcery speed spells that you have in your deck, but just Teferi Time Raveler, again, just being very good, making your opponent play at sorcery speed, letting you play even more at uh, instant speed than what you already can, and just, you know, not have to worry about wasting mana on your turn. You can just do it on your opponent's turn. Of course, minus a few things like some of these uh, creatures and stuff, mainly Flage. But um, speaking of Flage, Flage is prominently, you know, the center of this deck because it gets to play kind of both ways. And it's a way that we can close out the game very quickly, kind of how we talked about in the beginning where other decks are choosing to be more proactive with their threats and just proactive in general rather than trying to be reactive. And Flage is like a way that you can kind of do both. So for three mana, you get a 6-6. Six, six, but if it enters the battlefield, if it wasn't escaped, you have to sacrifice it. And uh, you get a lightning helix effect whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks. So... This is allowing you to kind of stop some of the early aggression from your opponent, gain a little bit of life as well. 
you know, pretty good against like those Boros decks. And then uh, in the later turns, you just get to escape this after you just kind of naturally play out the game of magic where you're casting some of your removal spells. You're playing cards like Tune the Narrative, which also gets you energy and draw cards. Essentially, this cycles for a blue mana. Then you're eventually going to escape this. You're going to be able to snipe one of your opponent's creatures. And then Flage is going to be one of the biggest things on the battlefield. So then you're able to just kind of attack get something off the board, your opponent's probably going to have to chump block the flage. If not, you know, again, gaining three life every time this thing attacks is going to be huge until eventually it goes to your opponent's face and slowly just ends the game that way. Uh, we have a Snapcaster Mage here. We have plenty of other powerful spells we'll get to here in a minute. Uh, Snapcaster Mage, not typically a card that you would see in the modern format, but I think the fact of, you know, a lot of these and a good energy cards cost one mana, they get you a ton of energy. And the 2-1 body is kind of relevant, which is a little surprising given the uh, like the amount of just first strike creatures, especially from the Boros energy deck, where we see like Ocelot Pride, we see Amp Raptor being first strikers, uh, the the Bor- uh, Orcish Bowmaster, my god, made me forget English. Orcish Bowmaster can ping the body. Typically, Snapcaster has been defined by how good is the 2-1 body, because we know that flashing back a spell is usually pretty good. And I would think that the 2-1 body is kind of weaker than ever, but uh, it seems that uh, people think otherwise that Snapcaster Mage is a fairly good option going forward as like kind of one of your threats. Uh, I guess it does allow you to also play a little bit more at like instant speed, double up on a lot of your other powerful spells and whatnot. So imagine like two Snapcaster Mage is totally fine. Of course, three Solitude, getting two Swords to Plowshare something. Uh, eventually you can get to the point where you can hard cast this and it'll end up being very good. And again, just kind of helping to helping you in like racing situations where you can kind of put the game a little bit out of reach with the amount of life that you can gain from a solitude also does really well against opposing flages because you do not want to be staring down your opponent's flage in really any matchup uh, i can't imagine the control deck it's really like that bad but that being said you know just getting rid of it and being done and over is pretty good in my book so we we're talking about a lot of these like other energy cards and stuff that you get that you can kind of uh, accrue this energy to make Wrath the Skies a little bit better. Uh, one few of the ways we can do that is Galvanic Discharge. We can choose a creature or a Planeswalker. We get three energy and then you pay an amount of energy and then deal that much damage. So if you pay one energy, you deal one damage, two, you get two, so on and so forth. This is like a way that you can kill some smaller creatures in the early game. You can kill some of their one, two toughness creatures. You end up banking one or two energy. Sometimes you can just target something and decide to pay no energy and get three you know, if that's kind of where the game is at. Uh, we briefly touched on two in the narrative. Draw a card, you get two energy. This is just kind of like a nice little turn one play that you can do uh, in conjunction with something like Lorian Reveal to make sure that you hit your land drops. Uh, but that's kind of like the main ways that you have of gaining energy is like the Wrath of the Skies, Tune the Narrative, and Galvanic Discharge. And really, they all definitely work in tandem well with each other. Just the fact that uh, with Wrath of Skies, you're able to get more energy if you need to. If it needs to be a 5-mana Wrath, it can be a 5-mana Wrath and still be pretty good. But uh, a lot of the times when you just play a Tune the Narrative, Galvanic Discharge on turn 1, and then you're able to follow it up with like a Wrath of Skies, you're not going to really need to pay any more into it, which leaves you open to cast something like Counterspell, cast Spell Snares, whatnot, Prismatic Endings, uh, with the you know Converge cost being 2, you get to exile something like uh, not only a permanent that's cost 2 or less, and of course, the One Ring, it wouldn't be a modern deck without the One Ring. Very powerful, gives you protection from everything. When you cast it from your hand, you uh, lose a life for each burden counter on it, and then you draw cards equal to the number of burden counters on it whenever you tap it. Uh, this card is insane. No introduction, no further explanation needed. Like This is a very good way to kind of... Keep going through your deck. You have a lot of ways to kind of gain life. You know, Flage and, uh, in a way, Solitude are very, very good ways of doing it. You just cycle through your deck a ton, thanks to Tune the Narrative, uh, eventually getting the Castlorian Reveals, if not just getting, you know, fresh lands out of your deck to, you know, ensure that you hit your land drop every turn. The One Ring is also going to make sure that you are very likely to make your land drops. The mana base is pretty self-explanatory. You have things like Xander's Lounge, and I believe there's like another land. I think it might just be the Xander's Lounge. So you have the Xander's Lounge as like a way to get up to four, so you can uh, exile things with, or exile four cost things with Prismatic Ending, as in like your opponent's uh, One Rings, and other things like that, even like Shieldreds as well. Uh, the other kind of interesting card in this deck, I mean, you have, you know, just a bunch of fetch lands, shock lands, some of these surveil lands as well. Uh, Arena Glory, 
is something that comes into play tapped, and unless you control a mountain, it taps for red, and you can pay a red, tap it, exert it, add two red if that mana is spent on a creature spell, it gains haste until end of turn. This is a way that you can get back a flage from your graveyard and basically just like snipe down opposing flages. I saw it on a uh, Apex Gaming stream where a player you know brought back a flage, passed a turn, and then his opponent immediately went and activated their own Arena of Glory. ETB, shoot your flage, attack, shoot your flage, hit you for six. It was pretty it was a pretty good tempo play, and like this is something that you can do with this card. Not really too much more like you can do like with Snapcaster Mage, like Solitude is back with the Solitude and get in for some damage that way. Uh Cyborg, cosine to memory. One blue counter target triggered or triggered ability or colorless spell. Replicate for one. There's a decent amount of Eldrazi decks showing up. There's also, you know, Storm is, like, still a thing, even though if it's not uh, even close to the best thing that you can do. Uh, there's plenty of things that this can kind of counter, so it's just a nice kind of addition to the deck and, you know, in a big way, three copies of it in the sideboard. March of the Otherworldly Light, you can pitch white cards from your hand to make it cost two less, but then you can exile target cre artifact, creature, or enchantment with mana value X or less. While it's way, well, the Black March is definitely a lot better than the White March in terms of, like, even a total of what deck is playing it uh this is like a way that you can end up drawing a bunch of cards with like the one ring and then you have like things to pitch to it and it's a nice mana sink to kind of get rid of some more annoying threats two surgical extraction celestial purge is one copy another wrath of skies bringing up to four total copies in the 75 two force negation the third to fairy time raveler and three obsidian charmaw to disrupt those Eldrazi decks, because uh, even this card can end games pretty quickly. Just being a 4-4 flyer, destroying a non-basic land and opponent controls can definitely clean up quite a bit, I would say. You know, just the fact that Tron and uh, Eldrazi Tron, or just Eldrazi decks, are kind of running around in high enough numbers to where playing some amount of Obsidian Charmaw is, like, respectable, I would say. And that is the Jeskai Control deck for the modern format. Look... It's not sexy. It's not doing anything crazy. You know, we have a mono black, you know, necro that's drawing, you know, eight cards at one time and then, you know, dealing a ton of damage to your opponent or, you know, getting rid of their board and gaining a ton of life to then draw more cards and then playing shields and whatnot. You know, it's nothing like that. It's not Nadu where you get to draw, like, you get the Shuko assembly line and all this other stuff. But it is very effective in what it does. And I think even past Nadu existing in the format i think just guy control is set up very nicely to just go out and kind of do its thing it has a lot of good things to kind of combat the format at large it has a, a lot of things to kind of stop your opponents from being able to go wide on it especially with the rise of like ocelot pride and some of the boros energy decks where you can just make an obscene amount of tokens with that and eventually you get the city's blessing you're making even more and then they end up stacking very nicely the fact that for three mana you can wipe away the ocelots plus all the tokens is going to be very nice of course you can always do it for two mana if you've somehow gotten a spare energy along the way and i think with uh nadu a nadu ban like almost guaranteed on the horizon i think boros energy is kind of poised to be one of the best decks in the format and i think just guy control has a fairly good matchup or at least has a lot of tools that i like against the boros energy deck and potentially future like mardu energy decks on a black necro and so on i think it just does it does a lot of things that i like that control decks didn't really have before it ends up just being able to be a lot more efficient on top of getting that element of control and it has now something to uh, not only help it kind of play a little bit of defense, but then also quickly go on the offense and try to end the game as fast as possible, as early as like two turns, really, all things considered. But, you know, let me know what you think in the comments down below of the Jeskai Control deck. I know it's not the most fun archetype to, like, play. Control really isn't the most fun, I would say, in a general sense for a lot of people. But, you know, when it is one of the best decks to be playing in the format, it is worth talking about because usually Control isn't super relevant, and now it's, you know, showing that it can be a very big player in this metagame. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of Jeskai Control, what deck you in Modern you would like to see next as we kind of go through some of these decks and hopefully... Uh, some of them end up sticking around after the Bird Wizard, you know, more than likely gets banned in a few weeks. And, of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button, ring notification bell, so you know when those videos get posted. That's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.